Take the illusion of theft and cash in on the <laughs> cupidity of unscrupulous men. Hmm? And your very considerable talents. How do you feel about David Jason, star of ITV's A Bit of a Do, is just one of tonight's guests in Aspel and Company. That's next. Tomorrow's case for Poirot begins with a threat. Have you shown to Scotland Yard this latest letter? No, I came straight to you. It didn't seem much point. They didn't seem interested the first time. Very well. Poirot must himself intercede. In a search for the truth, who can be trusted? Poirot, tomorrow, 8.45. One new washing machine. May I be of assistance? I am Victor, the definitive washing machine. And you can talk. Hardly a major achievement. Humans can do it. Enough technology to run a small planet. And where do I end up? In a green kitchen. May I? Now, red's a good, strong color. Whisk? Of course, whisk. Created to be a liquid, never a powder. It's a technical marvel, you know. It'll need to be. Let's see. Soup, mud, egg. Was there an earthquake? A birthday. Good grief. Whisk, please. Gloopy, isn't it? Gloopy. The softness of a liquid, but the power to penetrate every fibre. Technically speaking, it's brilliant. By the way, are you married? Mm. Whisk. Technically speaking, it's brilliant. Fault in section 305, request immediate patrol. the clock and across the nation. Energy for life. Discover the secret of naturally beautiful skin. New Timote Moisturizer. With natural herbal extracts, cares for your skin. To leave it feeling beautifully soft. Timote Moisturizer. One of four new skincare preparations from Timote's Secret Garden. Oh, 
Crisp golden flakes of corn. Just a splash of milk. Thank you very much. Why can't everything be as simple as Kellogg's cornflakes? I got it! Even you guys can get to the Super Bowl. The play's written on these packs of marathon. It's stuck into the competition, and you could be flying to New Orleans. Two week vacations for two, plus your tickets to the Super Bowl next season. They pack marathon with peanuts. I'm over to pack these nuts off to the Super Bowl. The Spitting Image team say a fond farewell to Ronald Reagan in Bumbledown later this evening at 10.30. And then the story of the highwayman as he travels in his 18-wheel super truck, obliterating crime wherever he goes. Our film is at five past 11. Now on TVS, conversation and wit in Aspel and Company. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good evening. If you're watching this on your video recorder and you want to know at once who my guests are, just press the fast forward button and <laughs> joining me tonight. <laughs> they are that brilliant comic actor who, after years of portraying characters of widely different generations, is finally playing someone of his own age, the 87 year old David Jason. From the television series Bread, the young master Joey Boswell, alias Peter Howitt. And here now, a girl who, a star after just one film, has been called the young Bardo and a female James Dean, which probably doesn't impress her because she's still only 18. That film was Wish You Were Here, and she is Emily Lloyd. <laughs> I think you must be the youngest guest I've had on the show. Do you worry and get depressed about being 20? Well, petrified, yeah. Um, I think I, I, slightly scared. I mean, I don't know. I think you have to kind of enjoy every moment while it's there. Mm. But, yeah. I mean, you can't really believe it's happening. In no, Korea. no, it's, it's still overwhelming. I still don't realize it myself. Let's uh, show a clip from the film, which you wish you were here, which has been in the top three British films of last year. And in this clip, there you are as a young waitress confronting your middle-aged ex-lover. Can I help you, sir? Cup of tea, please. We don't serve cups of tea, sir. Only pots. That's a teapot, not piss pots. Although we can always make exceptions. If you want a cup of tea, you must go to the cafe. With all the other riffraff, this is a cafe. Pots of tea, then. Language. And a bit of cake. What a bun. Bath bun, Chelsea bun, currant bun, honey bun, up your bum, fairy bun, seed cake, cherry cake, fruit cake, ginger cake, eccles cake, tea cake, lemon cake, Swiss rolls, dinky rolls, jam sandwiches, macaroons, cheese straws, and scones. Oh, just have the tea. Please. Please. Thank you. Everyone loves your performance. It, it's a funny film, but it's a very sad one, isn't it? I think there is a lot. I think the great, the good thing about the character is she's got this amazing resilience. You know, she doesn't, she won't conform. She doesn't want to. But there's also that very. She's very vulnerable at the same time. Yeah. Were you reluctant to do the rude bits? Oh, the rude, <laughs> very, very reluctant. Um, I, not, not. Really, I don't think I was reluctant. I think you know. The, I didn't realise that there's one scene where I have to moon in it, and I um, I, I saw the screen. show the bottom. But the bottom. <laughs> yeah, the bottom. No, and I, I, um, I saw it in the script, and I, you know, I, I thought it was a joke, and I tip it out, and then I realised the director said, "No, I mean, it's not a joke. This is really in the film." So I was like, "Oh no!" And um, but what I did before the scene, I made every, I made the director and the 
sparks all line up moon. I said, anyone who wants to watch the sh scene is going to have to do the same thing. But, um... I know that face. Yes. <laughs> And, um, but they were so they were really mean. They played a really well. It wasn't really a nasty trick, but they, as I we only did one take, which was, was which was okay. But they, as I you know put, put the nightdress over, they didn't say cut. So I was standing there for like two two minutes breathing. <laughs> <laughs> I only realised. I saw the goose pimples. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, now I presume after the terrific success of that mm. film, the, the world is your oyster. Millions of offers. Well, the, yeah. I mean, I've been really really lucky and. Um, it is, you know, I went to America and there's the whole, you know, the whole agent thing and that whole saga, but, um... What, how, what, what about agents? How do you find an agent, particularly in America? Well, it's, they kind of find you. I mean, it's, it's very, very, you know, it's almost like being a piece of meat if you have got a film that's successful out there and they really don't, you know, leave you alone. There's that, that kind of, you know, manic, um... Behavior. I don't know what. I mean, it's. I always think that a good rule is going, is going by how they talk to their secretary. Do you know if they're rude to their secretary, then you can usually tell. But I mean, some of it was ridiculous. You know, I went on. I was going to go on the. Um, I went on the Johnny Carson show. One of the agents actually followed me up to the Johnny Carson show, and was like hanging around back. Stage, you know, literally with a pen and paper. Come on, you gotta sign this. You gotta sign. But I had this. I was so nervous about going on the Johnny Carson, Carson show. I had this vision of this agent crawling behind a chair and putting the piece of paper with a pen in my. You know, you sign your life away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. has, has it? Did they spoil you? They. I mean, there was loads of rumours about. I did get presents and things. I got lots of bath. One agent kept sending me things for the bath, and I started to take it rather personally. <laughs> you know, like smelly. I did. Really, but and then another agent. There was a rumour that he. Um, had uh, bought me a horse, a pony. And of course, I got it wasn't true, but my mum immediately got this phone call. She's like, We've only got a small back garden, you know. And that really. really it's like being the Queen, really, isn't it? Getting all these silly things. I mean, except I didn't get to get them. It would be all right. Just promises, think, yeah, yeah, promises. What about filming in America? You had to be American, didn't you? What problems with the accent? Well, there was one problem. They, they put me with this Italian, this big. Um, this Italian family, and I had to talk like that. You know, some people say I'm so, but I'm not. I'm just retarded. It was that kind of very, very Brooklyn. And I lived with this Italian family. But I had this big, fat Italian mama who used to, um, she used to lock me in the room uh, uh, where we used to eat, and every day she'd say, eat something. You gotta eat something. You no, know, I used to say, I don't want to eat nothing. I don't want to <laughs> be a big, fat Italian mama. But, um, what about being in America, presumably not on your own, apart from living with the family? Were you chaperoned? I was chaperoned. I went through about, I went through three different chaperones. I had one, <laughs> well, they went through, I don't know what happened. I had one, <laughs> one, one big, um, very, very old lady who was 65, and she was supposed to be looking after me, but she couldn't walk, and I don't know what I was. <laughs> so, so I ended up making her soup, you know, and reading bedtime stories, you know, she was supposed to be looking after me, but... Um, Someone's got a great sense of humor. I know, definitely, <laughs> <laughs> Mike Spence. <laughs> You're, you're, you worked with Bruce Willis, didn't you, yeah. and, uh, and Peter Falk. How, yeah. how did they treat you? They were very nice. I must... Um, I was closer to um, Peter Falk than Bruce Willis, because um, uh, Bruce Willis used to stay in his trailer for about, you know, two hours, and that was a way of working, I suppose. It's fine by, you know, that method. Actually, but we did, I did go bowling with them one time at Demi Moore, you know, they're very nice. I mean, they, and they all had names. I couldn't believe it, because they, they print your names up on the on the tel television, there's like a um, screen in the bowling area. And, you know, she was called Bunny and he was called Duke. So I thought oh, I had to think of a name, so I called myself Wolf. But it was quite, you know, it's quite an experience, that as well. Did you have to act like a wolf as well? Yeah, he used to howl every time we used to get over there. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Funny old world, isn't it? It's true, very true. <laughs> so we'll be ha back in just a moment with some more company. <laughs> we thought making filter coffee was sometimes a bit of an effort. We made Brookbond Red Mountain. Red Mountain is freeze-dried to taste fresh and richly roasted. We just got to paint the ceiling. Why don't you take a seat? Can't beat fresh coffee, Maud. Especially when it's served in beautiful cups, Maud. Red Mountain. It's like ground coffee taste without the grind.
Nothing much, sister. A real Italian meal needs a real Italian pasta sauce. Ragù, based on an authentic family recipe for 50 years. Ragù, it brings out the Italian in you. M&M's, delicious milk chocolate covered in a crisp, colorful shell. M&M's, that M&M's feeling. Milk chocolate melts in your mouth, not in your hand. Your milk chocolate joy. M&M's, capture that M&M's feeling. M&M's, pure milk chocolate or pure milk chocolate with peanuts. The milk chocolate melts in your mouth, not in your hand. She traveled halfway around the globe to a world few had ever seen. She risked her life and lived an incredible adventure. Diane, we can't stay on this mountain forever. And she learned that even here, no! the most dangerous animal is man. Sigourney Weaver in the true adventure of Diane Fossey, Gorillas in the Mist. Paul's Mentholiptus, special vapor action to unblock your nose, soothe your throat. Paul's Mentholiptus vapor action for your nose and throat. Welcome back. And welcome to a keen sportsman who was banned from playing rugby, not because of foul play, but because his employers were afraid his good looks might be spoiled. It all makes sense when you know that the, he appears in the TV series Bread. It is he of the leather trousers, Joey Boswell, alias Peter Howitt. <laughs> Well, now, it must be a problem for an actor in a series, particularly, because the public always wants you to be like the character, don't they? Yeah. The thing about Joey Boswell, this person who's haunting me at the moment, is that he's so, he's so bloody perfect, and I'm so not perfect. And uh, he, he wears all the stuff, and he looks so good, and he is so caring and loving and in control and capable. And then there's me. <laughs> but you love your mum, don't you? I love my mum, yeah. That's about as far as it goes, I think. That's about the likeness ends there, really. Although I always hear the writers try to bring in the characteristics of the actor after a while. That's not happening in your case? No, Joey doesn't pick his nose at all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think we'll stop that we'll one. We'll stop that one. <laughs> now, you all abandoned the kitchen, didn't you, for that Christmas special, went off to Rome. Was that a, a, a sort of happy perk? I'm not a great traveller. I'm not very good at being... Uh, abroad, I get kind of homesick and lonely and stuff like that. I'd be no good in America mm. for, for a long period of time. But it was great fun. I mean, knowing that we were going there to work um, kind of relaxed everybody, and um, it, it was it was really good fun. Do you think you'd ever um, refuse a part because it meant being away for a while? It sounds. I don't think so. But I mean, you can let paranoia go too far sometimes. I have actually thought about it. It only happened about a couple of years ago. I went on a holiday, and after about four or five days, I got really itchy and quite nervous and actually had to come home and it's kind of stayed with me for a while and I hope I can get rid of it because if I was offered this some major film I would mooned at enough producers and maybe got a film <laughs> <part>. <laughs> 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 No, it, it meant a lot to you, didn't it, when, when Paul McCartney came on the oh, show? Yeah, thrill of, a, thrill of a lifetime, apart from being here, of course. Mm. Um, <laughs> it, uh, I mean it. <laughs> yes, I, I mean, Paul and Linda, are, they know Carla very well, and they're very, they're very pally, and they're big fans of the program. And uh, when we found out they were going to be on again, there was this kind of disbelief that they, were, they would actually turn up. But it, it, I've been a, a rampant Beatle fanatic since I was a little girl, and uh, <laughs> I, I just 
To be in the same room as somebody like that takes a bit of getting used to. Um, I don't know if you found it with, with Bruce Willis and the, the people you're working well, with. Well, totally. I mean, yeah, if you do respect... But I'm terrible because I got to people and not realise that they're fa still, that they're well known. I said, how have you famous, been? Yeah, yeah. You know, like, have, you so, been? have I seen you before? And then someone points out, you know, that's Paul McCartney or that's Bruce Willis. Mm. I'm like, oh, yeah. Well, I want to know how he's been. He might have yeah, been there. I don't exactly. care who he is. Yeah. <laughs> okay, in person. Exactly. But to, to be sitting in a, in a room just chatting with Paul, to, with Paul and Linda when we first arrived. Um, I've shown them to this room to kind of have a chat and didn't realise it, it was just going to be the two of them sitting there. And you, you, you take on this kind of... It's really be very interesting and, and try and answer questions and be very, very eloquent and all this kind of thing. And suddenly the little, the little swine in the back of your head says, you know this is Paul McCartney you're talking to, don't you? And you go, oh, isn't it? Pull yourself up and you say, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Well, really, Paul, that's very interesting. And tell me. And then the little man reminds you again. You go, oh, they're all over again. <laughs> talking about tourism, I think one of the greatest stories, again, the present company accepted, mm -hmm. was when I was standing at the bar of the BBC once and realised I was having a drink with the mayor of Toy Town. <laughs> All the listeners and viewers will know what I mean. Larry the Lamb. Larry, Larry the Lamb. 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 Larry the Lamb